Welcome to our lecture online. Finding the range, especially for some functions, becomes a lot more difficult than finding the domain. It's a little more tricky and it requires some special rules, some special approaches. So we're going to show you how to do that here. Of course, as far as the domain is concerned, you can right away tell that x cannot equal 5 because 5 minus 5 is 0, which gives you a 0 denominator, which means that at x equals 5, we have what we call a vertical asymptote. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to draw that function, and the way to do that is to start with an x and a y-axis. There's our y-axis, there's our x-axis, and at x equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Right there, we're going to draw a dashed vertical line because whatever the function looks like, it cannot cross that line because there's no circumstance in which x is allowed to be 5. 5 minus 5 is 0, 0 denominator, undefined. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find a point to the left and to the right of that vertical asymptote. So we're going to find the value for y when x equals 6, for example. So when we do that, we put in 2 times 6 divided by 6 minus 5, which is 12 over 1, which is 12, which means when x equals 6, y is equal to 12, which is up here somewhere. So this is the point 6, 12. And then if we try to find y when x equals 7, we get 2 times 7 divided by 7 minus 5, which is 14 divided by 2, which is 7. So you can see that as x becomes 7, now y will be only 7. So instead of 12, y will be 7. So you can see that asymptotically, the curve goes up towards the asymptote, and then here it looks like it's going to come down this way. On the other side, we'll do the same on the other side. We're going to evaluate y when x is equal to 4, which is uh, 2 times 4 divided by 4 minus 5, which is 8 over negative 1, which is negative 8. So in other words, when x equals 4, y is equal to negative 8, which is about down here somewhere. So that's 4 comma negative 8. This point right here, that was the point uh, 7, uh, 7, 7, yeah, 7, 7, there we go. And we'll try one more point, y when x equals 3, that's equal to 2 times 3 divided by 3 minus 5, which is 6 over negative 2, which is negative 3. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to negative 3, so that's about there. So you can see that asymptotically, it looks like the curve looks like this. So on this side, we'll come down like this, and on this side, again asymptotically, we go close to the line, and we come this way and we start curving this way. All right, but then how does it end? Well, now we're going to take a look at something else. Is there some restriction that we get from y? Can y be any value? It turns out it can't. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the limit. The limit as x approaches infinity. That's what we do. We're going to, we're going to put in really big values of the quantity 2x over x minus 5. So what I'm claiming here is, when x becomes really big, let's say 1,000, we get 2,000 divided by 1,000 minus 5. What if x becomes a million? 2 million divided by a million minus 5. How about a billion? 2 billion divided by a billion minus 5. That minus 5 becomes less and less significant, and in the end, it's almost completely insignificant. So in other words, this can be said to be the limit as x becomes infinitely big, that will then be 2x over x. We can simply forget about the 5. It's like the 5 isn't there. I think you should be able to write that out, what you just said about insignificant, you know, 2, two billion over a billion miles. You want me to show you graphic? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So let's try just write it out. Yeah, I'll write it out. So let's try that. So let x equal 1,000. Then the function becomes, then y is equal to 2 times 1,000 divided by 1,000 minus 5. And so that would be 2,000 over, that would be 2,000 over 995, which is about equal to 2. And then if we let x equal a million, we get y is equal to 2 times a million divided by a million 
minus 5, which is 2 million, divided by 1,995,999,999. Oh, which means that this is just about equal to 2. The bigger x becomes, the closer that fraction becomes equal to 2. So essentially, when we write the limit as x goes to infinity of 2x over x minus 5, we can say that's equal to the limit of x going to infinity of 2x divided by x, and then the x's cancel, and then we realize in the limit that's equal to 2. As x becomes really big in one direction, we can also, of course, make x a negative big number, and we get the same result. In other words, no matter what we do, in the end, y will be equal to 2 only when x becomes infinitely large, which means that we have another asymptote, a horizontal asymptote, at y equals 2. So what we're saying here, y will never be equal to 2 unless x goes to infinity, unless x becomes infinitely large, which means it never will do that, and so therefore y will never equal the value 2 which means we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, because we know that it can never become 2, and therefore we can see that this curve will asymptotically reach the y equals 2 curve there, and will asymptotically reach the y equals 2 curve here. That's what that function looks like. Now, we realize that y can become as big as it wants to be in this direction, as small as it wants to be in this direction, but there's one value that y cannot be, which is y equals 2. And therefore, we can now write that the range... Why is that 19999 bottom fraction? It's like 1,999,995? 1,995? Yeah, that doesn't equal to minus 2. Oh, 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 you're right. I'm sorry, that's a good point. It should be... 999,995. Good correction. That's right. So, because I put a million in front of it, it's actually a million minus 5, which is 999,995. Good point. All right. So the range is equal to the set of all values y such that y cannot equal 2. And that will then be the proper way of writing the range. So you can see that in this case, again, looking for the range, we're looking for the value that y cannot be, y can be all other values. It does help to graph the function, it does help to realize that x cannot equal 5, that comes out of the denominator, and then we realize that x cannot equal 2, because it can only be 2 when x becomes infinitely large, either in the positive or the negative direction, so therefore y will never be 2, because x cannot ever become infinity, and that is how it's done. Are you going to do some problem that's range and domain? Yes, I will do an example where we do range and domain. Because you already said what the domain shouldn't be. <laughs> well, and a lot of times when you find the range and domain, you're actually finding what the range and domain cannot be. Yeah. And then you put the exceptions in. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, we'll do that.